Hey everyone, this is Carbide3D and I'm Edward. Today we're going to make a cover for the receiver on the back of your truck. Let me show you how to do it. I used four pieces of material for this project. I used two pieces of HDPE, one piece of acrylic, and one piece of really thin aluminum. Like all great projects, this one started with a sketch. I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to put it together, but I knew I wanted it to be super clean. So no fasteners or overlays or tabs or anything else that would sort of muck up the front of it. I ended up with three different pieces. The black plastic was gonna be the back piece and the white plastic was gonna be the front piece. And then I was gonna sandwich the green acrylic between the two of them. So I moved over to Carbide Create and I started to actually draw the part. Now I wanted these to be a friction fit. So I ended up just importing the file one time, deleting the letters and then keeping that one shape to do all the tool paths from. And you'll see in the time lapse that I'm actually just disabling and enabling different tool paths when I'm exporting the G code. Because I didn't want to cut into my threaded table, I grabbed a piece of plywood and clamped it down as a sacrificial piece. And then I just used brad nails to actually attach the material that I was cutting out. HDPE is an industrial plastic that's super durable. I think it looks really nice and it machines very well. I was cutting this with a quarter inch three flute cutter at 70 inches a minute with a quarter inch depth pass. Acrylic on the other hand is a very brittle plastic. For this piece I couldn't brad nail it because it would have just shattered so I drilled a clearance hole in each corner and then screwed it down to the waste piece. You have to be careful with acrylic because it is really finicky. If you drill too close to the edge, it'll crack. If you push too hard with the drill bit, it'll crack. If you look at it funny or talk to it mean or say something about its mom, it'll probably crack. With all of the parts cut out, it was time for cleanup. And because I didn't use tabs or any holding mechanism, cleanup was pretty straightforward. I used a deburring tool to clean up the rest of the features. And if you don't have a deburring tool, you should definitely pick one up. You can buy them for less than $10 at most home improvement stores. Look in the plumbing section as they're typically used to clean out the inside of PVC pipes. But you can use them on almost any material. Just be careful with plastic because it's really easy to overdo it. All you really want to do is scrape the deburring tool across the edge to break it and give it a small chamfer. HDPE is engineered to be slippery, and because of that, it's very difficult to bond anything to HDPE. I chose to use VHB tape, which is an acrylic foam-based tape that is industrial grade. I cut the VHB into small strips, and I applied it pretty much everywhere that two surfaces would come in contact. VHB tape comes in a variety of thicknesses and widths and strengths. For this particular roll of tape, the data sheet said that it needed 15 PSI of pressure over the course of an hour to gain full adhesion. To give the tape a chance to set up, I created a sandwich with my new assembly. I used two pieces of plywood and four regular clamps. Clamped everything down and I let it set up. My truck has a class three receiver which has a standard opening of two inches by two inches. The center of the hitch pin is three inches from the face of the receiver and has a diameter of five eighths of an inch. I had a lot of different ideas for the bracket, but in the end, I chose the simplest one, which was just a piece of aluminum that had a small bend at one end. I drew that up in Carbide Create and then cut the piece out. You'll see here I'm using my third different way of clamping something down. If you learn anything from this video, just remember that the more ways you know to hold something down, the faster you can work through a project. With the aluminum piece cut out, it was time to put a bend a half inch from one end. I have a three-in-one, which you can see in the video in the background. It's a brake shear roller. But I recently picked up this magnetic punch and die set from Amazon, which I wanted to try out. This just clamps onto any four-inch bench vise and allows you to create a really sharp bend into thinner material. 
After the tape had set up, I took apart my sandwich and started laying out where the holes would go. There was a half inch of material left on the back side of this, so I marked two holes, pre-drilled them, and then used two high-low screws, quarter inch in length, to attach the aluminum bracket to the back of the assembly. With everything assembled, it was time to pin the cover into the receiver. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't really happy when it all fit together the first time. All in all, this was a really fun project. I can absolutely see myself making more of these in the future as gifts for some of my friends. That's it for this one. We'll see you next time with a brand new project.